You will fight for your honor. I meant you no disrespect. Rise and fight, Prince Zuko. You will learn respect. And suffering will be your teacher. No! God, please, no! 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 Two seasons. That's how long we had to wait before we saw Ozai for the first time. All we got was a voice by the legendary Mark Hamill, which in all honesty is a bit unfair to Daniel Day Kim. But choices were made by the writers, which not only made these two the same in name only, but also ruined what arguably is the most important thing about this story. Fear. Hello you beautiful specimen of cosmic chance. It's a friendly African NPC and welcome to Under the African Sun. 2024's Avatar remake had a lot going for it. Good visuals in about 90% of the show. The casting was fine. Nothing to complain about there. And they had all the tools to make a remake worth making. But no, apparently they wanted to make it more like Game of Thrones. Not a great plan. Look, I'll level with you right now. I'm a huge fan of the original series. It has one of my favorite characters of all time and told such a beautiful story that it isn't out of place when talking about the best. Hell, I spent New Year's Eve in 2021 legit watching the first season till the new year. So obviously, the bias is real. But I'm not so much of a purist to reject the idea of the live action series. Problem is, this franchise has had two shots at it, and none of them improved on the original in any meaningful way. And the less said about this abomination, the better. <gasps> There's just not enough to like that you'd watch this over the original. Are you sure about that? It's a fact the original is better. I'll oh, die on that hill. Yeah. And it boiled down to a really basic human instinct. Fear. And not just any fear, fear of the unknown. As I mentioned at the beginning, we had to wait for two full seasons before we met Ozai. Before The Awakening, which is the first episode of the third season, Ozai was a looming shadow, an unseen threat whose presence reverberated through the narrative. You always hear show don't tell, but in this case having us create an image of this tyrant in our minds before meeting him made him that much more imposing. When Ozai finally graced our screens, the portrayal was chilling, his ruthlessness palpable, and his bending prowess unmatched. This man destroyed arguably the most talented firebender mentally, so he can claim the top spot for himself. And who might that be? Azula, of course. But we'll get to that in a minute. Ozai had a presence in the original you just can't see. You feel it and this was a man, nay, a monster who manipulated each and everyone under his control to serve him and only him. This is a man, mind you, who literally dropped the title held in his family for generations because he thought he was too great to be called Fire Lord by series end. He was to be known by Phoenix King. A beyond selfish narcissist who is ruthless beyond measure, that invokes fear at the sound of his voice, with unparalleled bending ability. I don't know about you, but that just sends chills down my spine. And this guy over here? You are not him. You are not him. No, 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 no. You are not him. Be honest with yourself. Does this guy strike fear into your heart? Does he seem ruthless? Does he seem like the guy who'd trip an old lady so she can be a bridge for him? I know this guy would, but this guy? Nah. You may be thinking, oh, it's because Daniel Day Kim doesn't do many villain roles. Or an actor doesn't need to look evil to be threatening. But nah, fam, I blame the writing and the direction. Nay, I blame the studio. Netflix, like the whole of Hollywood, 
thinks if you hire someone famous, you have to show their face. That's how you get superheroes never staying with their masks on, regardless of how dangerous or nonsensical it may be. Stop it. Get some help. In this case, it really took away from the story. The casting wasn't a problem. It was how they used the character. With the need to show Daniel Day Kim, we got additional scenes in the Fire Nation which further destroy what little fear we could have felt for him. If anything, live action Ozai cares for his country and more importantly, his children. Therefore, he is relatable. What? Walk with me. Now, I'm not saying the characterization of Ozai here is bad per se. Okay. I'm just not afraid of him or what he can or will do in the future. This man feels like a leader who wants to expand his kingdom. Not for selfish reasons, but for the betterment of the Fire Nation. And like a hard father who wants his children to do well no matter what he has to put them through. With Zuko's banishment, it wasn't just because he wanted to teach him a lesson for questioning his tactics. One may see him as trying to toughen up his kid and showing him war is about sacrifices and not just on the enemy's side. If you've played a war strategy game of some sort, like Total War, you know there are troops you have sacrificed for the benefit of the entire campaign. The morality of such tactics are questionable for sure, but they sure do exist even in modern day conflicts. So when Zuko is banished, one way of looking at it is he was sent to gather some real world experience and paired with an impossible mission, the results could have been what Ozai wanted. Sure, he burnt him, but in the live action remake, it's more of a plot point that needed to happen. Zuko needed his iconic scar and Ozai had to be the one giving it to him. Quick side note, in the animated series and Avatar comics, there is a deeper level to Zuko's banishment than just talking out of turn. Ozai hated his kid and didn't believe him to be his. You are the father! Now that I think about it, the live action show added stupid extra scenes, yet there was lore that could have been used for Ozai. They knew about it, so there's no excuse. You don't scare me! With Azula on the other hand, Jesus. Let's take a moment to mourn the death of my favorite villain from the animated series. The character assassination of Azula has to be one of the most frustrating things on this show. A cold, calculating woman of action who is just as cruel as Ozai was. Chef's kiss. The epitome of perfection and madness. In the original, her calculated cruelty and unraveling psyche captivated me. In the remake, however, her character is reduced to a mere shadow of her former self, robbed of her complexity and reduced to a jealous brat who feels threatened by Zuko? Are you serious? If anyone should have been banished, it's her after the stunt she pulled. Which brings me back to Ozai. Bro, my guy would not have taken this shit. Not in a billion years, not for his mama, not for nothing. But no, Azula talks back and even brandishes lightning to Ozai's face. And what does Ozai do? Absolutely nothing. Kinda has me thinking he's teaching his kid how to be more assertive and more perfect. These are traits which at the moment don't seem like much, but when either of his kids takes the throne, they will be ready and will only bend the knee to one person, and one person only, himself. As a leader and a father, he's instilling important traits for the kind of nation he's running. These unnecessary glimpses into the Fire Nation end up achieving something that shouldn't have happened, humanizing Ozai to the point of relatability. 
Gone is the fear-inducing aura. In its place, a ruler at war, a father figure striving for the betterment of his nation, a far cry from the monster we once feared. Sometimes it's easy to just complain and put blame on the writers and showrunners, especially if it seems like they don't know what they're doing. Zhao was a character written so well it still messes with me. That slimy scheming snake was so beautifully written it's a crime that they didn't treat Ozai the same. Zhao was in the show for exactly the amount of time needed. No more, no less. And it shines how such tight writing made him into the character he is. I honestly feel disgust every time I think of him. And it's because every time I saw him, his presence served a purpose which was straight to the point. Unlike Ozai, where they had to make their money's worth for casting Daniel Day Pym. By no means is Zhao someone I'm afraid of. Hell, I bench a balloon on my best day and I think I can take him. What he lacks in fear factor, he makes up for in slime. You just know if this guy is somewhere in the world with enough resources, he'd seriously mess up your life. It's a pity the same can't be said for Ozai. With the current trajectory, he will fall into the generic villain list that will either go down as a missed opportunity or as a waste of a good actor. Obviously, there's more to be said about this series overall. Like what they did to Bumi? Wow. That one confused me. Then you have casting which I didn't expect to grow on me. Still not THE Sokka, but I ended up liking him for some reason. This show has no right to exist, and I think the budget should have been used in a different show about Kiyoshi. Now that's a story with potential to be far darker and more Game of thrones -y than Aang's story. Anyway, decisions were made, like the one you're about to make now. Are you gonna subscribe or smash that like button? Hell, why not both? And better yet, do I watch this video or this one? Either way, thanks for watching. I've been your friendly African NPC, this has been Under the African Sun, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.